of uh, having uh, of Sh uh, Shimon here with us, who sponsors our Al Sheikh Academy. And he clearly, uh, Al clearly does a Lishma because, as he's registering right now, he detests us talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> but it is actually uh, not for him, it's for the Lufo Shlema, his dear wife, uh, Brigitte. Felicity. Felicity, but Simon. Amen. Okay. So, um, I think we finished with the uh, Sari saga of Cain, and uh, we discussed the birth of a, uh, a new, a new uh, character in the story, and that's Adam and Chava's third child, Shet. Uh, Shet. We discussed him and how he was an embodiment of Hevel himself. Hevel was disembodied, so to speak, all the good that was invested in the human species uh, after the separation of the good and the bad as embodied in Cain and Hevel, that was lost. And uh, the blood of all future generations was, uh, was in limbo. And uh, the al Shaykh introduced in the context of Yibum, of the Leverite marriage, the idea of Adam facilitating a new entree for the soul and the essence of Hevel to be re-embodied as Shetu as a replacement. I just realized now that Moshe is, is uh, short for... Moshe Shet Hevel. Shet Hevel, that's right. Yes. Okay. So... Um, the, um, the Chumash now uh, announces a new book. A new book? A new book. A Sefer. A Sefer Toldot HaAdam. Okay. So if you look in chapter 5, as the non-Jews uh, cut up the Holy Word of God. Um, okay. Perak Hey. Zeh Sefer Toldot HaAdam. This is the book of the progeny of man. Biyom, on the day, Bara Elohim, that Elohim created. Interesting. It's missing Havaya over here. When, on the day that God created Adam and Chava, it said Havaya Elohim. But here we say, on the day, Bara Elohim, Adam. Adam. It doesn't say Chava, it says Adam. Bidmut Elohim Asauto. God fashioned him in the form uh, of Elohim. Rather, not the form. We say demut vitzelam, right? Form and essence. Here, it's only in the likeness of. There's no, there's no tzelam. There's no mention of tzelam elokim here. Now elokim is associated with demut. Here, just to contrast. This, this pasuk is actually mentioned in the Gemara. I remember reading it. Uh... Well, this one certainly is. This is the reference to Abraham. <laughs> Ela told us Shemayim varetz bihi bara, right? Yeah. Okay, so this is the second telling of the creation of Adam, but the first one, in the, on the, when it goes through the days of the week, on, on the sixth day, it says like this. Vayivra Elohim et Adam. Okay, so over here it's a, okay. Vayivra Elohim et Adam betzalmo, betzalm Elohim bara osa, zachar nekeva bara osa. Okay, mm -hmm. so now one second. And then it says over here, Vayitzar Adonai Elohim et ha'adam, Afram and ha'adam, avibach ba'af of nishmas chai, vayi ha'adam and nefesh chai. In the story where Adam is first and Chava is subsequent, it calls, it says that it's Hashem Elohim. And it's Vayitzar, it's the Yitzira, as opposed to, in the beginning over here, it's Bria. Vayivra Elohim. But over here it talks about the Tzelem. And over here we don't talk about Tzelem, we talk about the Mut. Okay? So these are, this is the book of the progeny of man on the day that Elohim created man, in a likeness of Elohim, he created him. And then it goes on. Zachar unakeva bar'am. Male and female, they were bar'am created. Vayivarech otam, and God blessed them. Suddenly Adam, which was singular, becomes uh, embodied as male and female. So it's plural. Vayikra shemam, and God called their name Adam, biyom hi bar'am, on the day he created them. Okay. And Adam, the male uh, Adam, he was 130 years old, and then he spawned. Vayolid, he birthed Bidmuto in his likeness, Kitsalmo in his form. We're introducing the Tzalem here. Okay. It's fine. So the Tzalem is with the birth of Shed, rather, Shed the, okay. rather with the birth of Adam. Okay, so now what are we doing here? Are we, we're going to go back and we're going to talk about all the ten generations till we get to Noach. So just to give you a sense of the formula. And Adam, after 
the 130 years that he um, birthed Shes, he lived 800 years, and he had other sons and daughters. And all the days of Adam that he lived were 930 years, and he died. And this is the formula. Basically, they say so and so lived. It'll mention uh, some of their. Uh, it'll mention their kids. If they have other kids that are not as consequential <coughs> to the annals of history, it'll say other children also. So when it, when it mentions a child, it's not necessarily like we just had Adam, and it doesn't encapsulate his whole life. It doesn't it doesn't go back and say Cain, Hevel, and Shade. It starts off the story. Hey, there was a guy named. What are the annals of? What is the true legacy of man? He he uh, he had Shades, and he had other kids too, but he had Shades, and then he died, and it's gonna and it continues, and it goes ten generations till Noah. Okay, so so what is this Sefer Toldot Adam here? Is it going back and uh, some sort of historical account of the generation? Like, it's not a total historical account because it, it doesn't. It tells us that it's leaving out details. So it's, it's important details, right? So it's edited for a particular. What is the purpose here? What are we recording? What are we, right. are we preserving? Right. And why? Are, right. So the context that it's introduced to. Why is it called a sefer? So let's go back to the first verse and look at, uh, just note some of the anomalies. Mm -hmm. It says, this is the book of the legacy of man. If it's the legacy of man, like we said, it only mentions shes. It doesn't mention Cain and Hevel. And also, what does it mean this is the book? Does it mean the whole book? Does it mean Sefer Bereshis? Okay. And oh, we don't mention the Tzalem over here. We only mention the Dmut, like I noted, right? Mm. And it repeats itself. It keeps on saying, on the day he created them. What's this thing, on the day he created them? We're talking about years and of history and generations. What's, what's, what's this whole, what is this section of the Chumash? And what is this introduction uh, of how it couches these phrases that it uses to contextualize what it's about to say? Okay? Mm. Okay, just to peek. Let's see what the Al HaKadosh has to say. I have a... a to start is Dalit here. Oh, okay. Perfect. We'll, we'll start with a one liner. Okay, so uh, right before that, remember we had the whole story of Cain. Um, seven generations later, there was a gentleman by the name of Lemech who yeah. accidentally killed Cain. And um, it talks about his whole bloodline, and then it then it tells the story of Shes, and it doesn't pick up from there anymore. We don't know what happens later on. The last person mentioned, the daughter Naama, ends up becoming the wife of Noch. But otherwise, we don't know about Mechul Yael and and all these guys. We never hear from them again. Mm. Okay, the Al is going to talk about that. So um, just right before we start with the book of the progeny of man, it says, "Ule Shes Gamhu," and to Shes also him Yulad Ben. He birthed a child, a son, Enosh, and he called him Enosh. Az Huchal Lekro Shame Adonai. That's when Huchal. Huchal could mean, on the face of it, it means Lahatchil, to begin. Mm -hmm. That's when man began to call out Lekro, to call out Beshem mm -hmm. Havaya. That's when people started to call it the name of God. I want to tell you what Chazal say about this. Mm -hmm. Chazal say Huchal does not mean to begin. It's from a lashon of chulin. It means profanity. Az huchal, that's when they started in Enosh. When Enosh was born, that's when it was started to profane, to call out with profanity the name of God. And they say, and the Rambam talks about this beautifully. The Rambam, if you look in Hilchot Avodah Zarah, the first four chapters, he talks about historically how Avodah Zarah came to be. How did, who introduced the Vodazar? I, I mean, Adam had the perfect knowledge of God, right? Mm -hmm. So he says in the generation, he explains this Chazal, and he says in the generation of Enosh, what happened was that um, they took a step back, and it was a, it was a step back of humanity that ultimately allowed for full 100% of Vodazar. What was that step back? They felt at that point in history that God was so inapproachable and so intimidating and so awesome, and they felt so uneasy and insecure and awkward in their troubled relationship with him, that instead of dealing with God directly, they afforded the dignity to the king, to his servants. Which means, we can't deal with God directly, but every time the sun comes up, the sun is so awesome because he works on behalf of God and he manifests that, we'll relate to it through the sun mm -hmm. and through the moon, etc. And that becomes ultimately paganity. I love that word. I don't, think, I don't know if that's a real what word. What is it? Paganity. What is that? Well, there's Christianity. <laughs> and there is Islam yadity, <laughs> and there is paganity. It's some sort of insanity, or uh, you know, it's a it's a profanity. 
Okay, so uh, Paganini was, I mean, he may have been a ninny. I don't know if you, but we're talking about pagans. We're talking about people who see, when Avraham comes into the picture, you have people worshiping, you know, whatever the cult that focused on an individual detail of creation that they feel that they're going to have a relationship independently of God uh, with a particular aspect of creation that they can channel, they can funnel through and, you know, and then they start to serve that. So you had people that were serving the, uh, I don't know, uh, the thunder god and the, you know, if you were ag agrarian, you, you know, the rain god and et cetera, et cetera. And Avram Fino comes and he says, hey man, you know, there's, he's, he's already coming into an era where he has to uh, show everybody that there's a oneness and a unity. Mm -hmm. So what's fascinating is, Absolutely beautiful. When Avram Avinu is introduced on the scene in Parshas Lechlecha, this is how Chazal put it all together. I'm going to show you some of the hints here. Avram Avinu starts his whole career, and it says like bam, 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 like more than twice. It says, it says he's running around calling out the same exact words, Vayikra b'shem Hashem. He's calling out in the name of God, and it's a direct contrast to the words here by Enosh. Here, I'll try to find you an example. Here. It says, it says, Hashem appeared to Abram and said, to your offspring I will give you this land. That's mm -hmm. the first appearance in the beginning of Lachacha. So he built an altar there to Hashem who appeared to him. From there he relocated to the mountain east of Betel. And he pitched his tent with Betel on the west and the Ai in the, in the east. And he built there an altar to Hashem. Vayikra b'shem havaya. That's the second time or the third time um, since it's exact, it's a repetition of those words. So the way the Rambam says it's a bookend, and it's an ex exact contrast. Enosh's generation starts to uh, fracture reality mm -hmm. and to create the, the, um, <clears throat> the landscape for Abu Dazar, and Avram starts to restore that, and it's calling out in the name of God. So here, Chazal say, here it says, Az hucha, that's when they started. What do you mean? That's, it doesn't mean that's what they started. That's when they profaned. They called out, they allotted the name of God to things that were not God, mm. okay? so. And it's important to know this for the one-liner that the Ashok is about to say. Okay. So the Ashok HaKadosh says, it says that Ulesheit Gamhu, he also had a child. What does it mean, he also? also? You know, the same words, the last time we had Gamhu, him also. Was Hevel. Right. That Cain got, right? No, Hevel Gamhu, he also brought Gamhu. himself That's right. in the sacrifice. Okay. So what's Gamhu over here? Gamhu, when you say Gamhu, Pasuk is telling you something. It's two extra words. It didn't need yeah. to tell you. Hey, you know, he also had a kid. What do you mean? He, just say he had a kid. What, because Adam yeah. had a kid before you? So, oh, wow. Okay. Second time, you know. I, so what's the significance? So, so the Asher HaGadosh says, Amro Gamhu. When the verse says, him also, Yomar ki eira lo gamhu ke'aviv. The Pasuk is telling you that the same thing that happened to the pa happened to the, to the son. Sheholi mm -hmm. What happened to Adam? Nebuch. Adam, his first offspring, was ushered in a, a terrible age, meaning he was a person, a ne'er-do-well, who committed, he took humanity downhill. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing that happened to Shait. Because that's indeed what happened in the days of Enosh. Because that's when it was made like the Kodesh, the sanct the, that which was sanctified became profane. Chalila, heaven forfend. Hakriya b'shem Hashem, calling out things with the name of Havaya, but they cleaved to foreign service. I see. Okay, there you go. That's very tragic. That oh, yeah. Shet, who is the, like, uh, redeemer of Hevel, should himself bring a, a child that goes off the derech. Well, all it means is that, like we said before, that the reason why there was this bifurcation of the nature of good and evil embodied within Kain and Hevel is because God is doing some sort of uh, uh, breeding program where he's cleansing the human spirit. So if, Shait, if we would have been good by the love of Shaitan, then, you know, we would have been good. You wouldn't need Am Yisrael. The, the, the trouble with all this is that with, with, with every negative uh, child, you have the positive to, to show it. Mm -hmm. So with Hevel and Cain, but um, and and also with uh, Esav and Yaakov, right, but right. But here, really. who's the good that comes out of shit? Mm. Well, okay. So you're, you're saying he only had one kid named Enosh, right? That's your question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
ויחי שת חמש שנים ומאת שנה ויולד את אנוש. ויחי שת אחרי הולידו את אנוש שבע שנים ושמונה מאת שנה ויולד בנים ובנות. ויהיו כל ימי שת שתים עשרה שנה ותשע מאת שנה וימות. So first of all, it's true. He did have בנים ובנות. There were other kids too. So why is אנוש the only one single down? Because he was the one that had the most impact on that generation. And it happened to be a negative one. But, on the other hand, the bloodline that ultimately results in Anach, indeed, is from Shecht. He's also being counted right. because... So you have all these people. So what's going on? So you have the cleansing process, but you also have wherever, whatever level of immaturity that humanity is at the time, it also creates problems and it expresses those things. Right. So we're, are in a, we're, we're moving uphill, hopefully, <coughs> yeah. but we're also experiencing the embodiment of problems along the way. You know, your kid... May, your little kid may smash your windows, somebody, you're going to have to pay for it. And, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're investing in something. A, a, children are just mazikim. They just incur damage and loss. They're okay. destructive little beasts. <laughs> till God invests a holy angel in them when they become obligated to do mitzvah. But, but always... And we invest. The reason why God gives us a love for our children and, and you know, uh, the only parents can love their children the way they do is to, because we're meant to invest, they cannot, they're not capable, they're not designed to be capable immediately afterwards, you know, and therefore you need to hold their hand till they develop, and until you get there, they're going to be making a lot of problems, and you have to invest in the credit, you have to give them credit and space to be, and so, so don't be distracted by those things that happen, but those do present things that need to be addressed. So let's say, what I'm, what I'm positing is, perhaps let's say that God is, we know that this bloodline will result in a noach, and the noach will result in a, she, in a shame, and the shame will result in an aver, and the aver will result in an avram, and the avram will get to a yitzhak and a yaakov, and you know, before you know it, we got a Moshe Aaron, we got Yosef, Moshe Aaron, uh, and David. Okay, so we are getting there. And at the same time, look at all the trouble. I mean, we know we're going to get to Mashiach, and in the way there, there was an Egel, and there was Meraglim. So let's deal with those things as issues. But at the same time, we understand that there is a process moving but, forward. But I want to clarify this. Are you saying that the only positive soul coming out of Shed we have to wait till Noah to reveal that? No, 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 no. I'm saying, between... let's say, within Enosh, what I'm advocating to say is within Enosh, who is now a product of refinement, Yeah. right? There was still enough, meaning there still is a lot that needs to be filtered and fixed. And at that particular stage, that which was not fixed ushered in the age of Avodah Zarah. Mm -hmm. And that's just a, a symptom. But, but we're not saying that Enosh was, you know... It could be that on the individual also, shape was a bigger tzaddik than Enosh. But in terms of potential, Enosh was already refined mm -hmm. on that level. Mm -hmm. there, there are different ways to look at it, but I'm just advocating there's the, the, the macro, what's happening on the level of humanity, mm -hmm. and then there's micro, the individuals and their personal struggles. Right. Right. Okay? Right. Okay, so now. Um, but yeah, it's always sad. We see that, we always note, every time we get together, how the Chumash so far has just been a steady story yeah, of downhill. Of downhill. Yeah, but it, but it picks up when uh, Avram appears. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, just, you know, like the big tragedy, uh, right on the face, of, you know, Noah saves humanity, and then immediately, every, you know, his own kids. Yeah. And what happens? Yeah. yeah, it's until it Avram, you know, Yeah. Yeah. And then you can really appreciate the Gadlut of the Avot. Okay, should we start the next one? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Ze Sefer Todot Adam. This is the book of the progeny of man. Hine amro zes sefer hu miyutai. The words, this is the book, are totally superfluous. What do they teach us? What is, what is their meaning? For od, and further, shekol ha sefer eno toldot adam, this whole book, meaning if you're talking about Bereshit, it's not the story of the toldot of Adam. Vim perusho al mashem saper hem sheikh asar darat, and if it's an introduction to the next section of the Torah that just talks about the ten subsequent generations, you would infer that they are the story of the, of the progeny, the legacy of Adam. Why does the Pasuk need to spell it out for you? What is the significance, essentially? And then, not only that, but the Pasuk says, on the day that he was created. If we're referring to the progeny specifically on the same day that he was created, which would be maybe Cain and Hevel, Halo Hayu. They weren't even on that day that he was created, the way the Al-Shekh learns. Isn't it the creation of Adam? 
You right. Know? So, so how could you have? Why does it say on the day? It's going to. It, the pasuk is saying like this: These are the progeny of Adam mm -hmm. on the day he was created. Right. What does that mean? He didn't have progeny on the day he was created. Ve'imhu shabiyom bero hayabid mutalohim, and then the, the verse continues and it says when he was in the likeness of God. So are we talking about the likeness of God that he was in on the day he was created? Pshita, that's obvious. That was the one moment that he was in the likeness of God. Why, why are we harping on this? Why, why are we mentioning it? Ve'od, shehare nivra b'tzelem u'tmut. And we know also that it wasn't just the demut, the likeness, the ability to be like God in some sort of sense, but it was also b'tzelem, that we were built in a form to facilitate that, that was the likeness of God, whatever that means. So how come over here we're only mentioning the likeness but not the form? Ve'od, another question. Amro, then the verse says, Zachar unekeva bar'am, right? God made them uh, male and female. Shehu hefech amor. That's the opposite of what we were saying until now, because it says, these are the progeny of Adam on the day he was created. So why do we say Zachar nekeva bar'am all of a sudden? Shehu hefech amor, the od. One last question. Amra vayivarechota. It says, and he blessed them. Matzarech l'amra po. Why does it need to say over here that he blessed them? V'shekara otam adam, and that he called them adam. V'shahaya biyom hibaram. And all this was on the day they were created. Okay? We asked these questions when we looked inside. Mm -hmm. Trust me, you can roll back the tapes. Amnam. Terem yaskir asar darot shemei adam v'adnoach. Before the Pasuk wants to list and enumerate the ten generations from Adam to Noah, asher lo hitchil hadar sheni rak achar hiyot adam ben meo shloshem shana. And in that bloodline, the second generation from Adam only occurred after Adam was already 130. Right? He had Cain and Hevel on the, in the first, uh, when he was only one year old, less than one year old, probably less than a week old, possibly less than... It could have been two days, or right? It could have been Sunday. And then Shait, that starts this whole count, it wasn't until 130 <laughs> years later. Right. Okay? It was 130. So, so we're counting, we're not, so not only that, but we're contextualizing this whole list from the day that Adam was born, but we don't start till 130 years after into it. Okay? So, And God did not create his world to lay barren and desolate, meaning there needs to be a perpetuation of the species. What kept generations from occurring for 130 years? Mm. If this pasuk, you're going to use this to understand somehow to apply it to the story of Cain, I've been, I've, I'm deaf, I don't hear. I don't, don't try to explain this to me in terms of, meaning this whole thing in terms of Kayan, and then we're going to start talking about Shait. So, okay. We're going to get a little philosophical here. The difficulties started, all the difficulties started from the moment that God created man in the form of two faces. Meaning that he was a uh, being, one being named Adam, that was, that integrated the Zachar and the Keva back to back. This was an issue. Bilti Muchan Lo'alid, without being able to procreate. Because if they're back to back, they can't, right? They can't procreate. Ki ech yizdavek. So if God made the whole world in order that they should perpetuate the species, and yet Adam starts off, the experience of humanity is that the Zachar and the Keva are are joined yet in a way that it is impossible for them to perpetuate what's going on here. Yeah, but uh, that, that's not a problem because he, he fixed that in day one, like in, in the first instant. But, but it's so telling that he started, meaning if it's an agenda, if it's a mission for God to facilitate that, why start it in a way that it can't? What's the significance right, of that? Right. Right. So there's a deeper idea here in terms of generations, what a human generates, their progeny. And we know, uh, Rashi brings in the first Pasuk in Noach, it says, Ele toldot Noach. These are the progeny of Noach. It says, Noach ish tzadik. Noach was a righteous man. Tamim haya bedoratav. He was exemplary, exemplarily whole and complete in his generation. Es ha Elohim isalach Noach. Noach walked with God. And then it says what his progeny are. So Rashi says, 
these are the, the, the Pasuk uh, starts off, hey, I'm going to introduce to you the progeny of, Adam, of Noach, but it, the, first there's a parenthetical statement telling me how great he was. And then it gets to the kids. So Rashi says, to teach you, the, the greatest import, the greatest legacy, the impact that, uh, that a righteous person has for generations is the good deeds that they did. Okay? And similarly, a Tamil Chacham that doesn't have children, his Torah that he teaches others and the chidushin that he has are really seen as, in some way, much more real, right, a lasting, eternal kind of progeny in the world. So, so the al Shekha Kadosh wants to tell us here that, it want, that humanity was formed in a way that they were meant to have, they initially appear in their existence with, uh, with the mandate to create chidush, to create, create uh, um, generation and something new and something uh, viable and uh, a, a child, some sort of being, right? And yet, they're, they're meant to do it, expected to do it, but they're not in a way to do it in a physical sense, which is to hint that the highest way they could do it, they don't need to do it in a physical sense, but it's of unity, even if it precludes a physical child, there's a unity there that allows for ma'asim tovim. Okay, here, let's see it inside. He, ach, however, he nay, behold, iker todo tzadikim, the, the, the real progeny of the righteous, ma'asim tovim, their, their good deeds, v'chelti Torah, and their uh, portions of Torah. Kemosha katu b'sefer Zohar, like the, the Zohar explains, kitam et chacham shemet, for example, right, a, 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 a tamid chacham that passes away, lo hayat tzarech li'abemet ishto, his wife, if he didn't have children, does not need to have a Leverite marriage, ki torato hu toldatov, because he had children, his, his Torah. I don't think we hold that in the halacha, because we don't know, because from, from the point of view of perspective of Beit Din down here, we cannot, that's for God to know. We don't know that. But, but really, there would be, it's superfluous. That's the point. Okay, Inyan ben Azai. You know, ben Azai was a Tana who, um, he was, um, he never got, well, they, they say there may, he may have been married briefly, uh, briefly initially, but um, he spent his whole life as a single man. And um, they said, how you, could you be Mavato, the first commandment that appears in the Chumash? And he said, I'm sorry, I'm married to the Torah. Hmm. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of discussion on this. But anyway, he's a demut. He's some sort of paradigm or figure of somebody who's got total, total meaning and satisfaction and all those things that were meant to achieve by a regular person with a regular sense, he got that out of his career in learning. Okay? So, um, that were, what, was, what did he birth and what did he make abundant and what did he multiply in? The light of the Torah. Vizei Yomar. And that's what the verse here means when it says, Hine zes sefer. This is the book. You know what that means? That means that we're people of the book. Who sefer a Torah? We're talking about the Torah itself. Who told out Adam? A person's uh, manifesting the Torah in his life, in the time that he has allotted here, and how he uh, cleaves to it and embodies it and becomes a host for it. That is his true legacy. enyan, and that's this can be exemplified when we look at the, at the state that Adam was in, beyond biro Elohim Adam, on the day that Elohim created him. This, this is how we, this is, this will illustrate this idea. Below Isha Kenegdo liot kam kayam ba'ish. In a way that he was, humanity was configured in a way that it was physically impossible for them to actually have a future physical generation. Kihine ruchani, only in spirituality where they bidmut elokim asauto. Right? They say, you know, how can you be like God in a physical sense the most, right? God creates, right? So to be a partner with Him in the creation of a child, right? On, on that level, you would think. But the truth is, we're saying something, no, it, there's something much higher, right? There's a, in, in potentiality without that, but we want to take that out of, of the equation here to show what the true. What true generation is? You mean he's saying, saying that the, he created a uh, male and female at the beginning in a, ba- in a able to procreate right. because you don't need that to right. achieve the right. But you do mission. need a male and a female. What does that mean? You need you need uh, a relationship. You need an economy. You need two. You need uh, to relate to one outside you to care for them. To meaning the the ben adam lechavero. Um, whether, you know, that's, that's crucial, 
There needs to be a giver, a receiver, or vice versa, whatever that right. is. And that's, that's where, that's the arena for your ma'asim tovim. Beautiful. It's beautiful what he's bringing out. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. Okay. Ki az ruchaniyin. And in that state, the only progeny that he could have was in the spiritual sense. Heim orot sefer Torah. Those uh, become embodied in the lights of the book of Torah. And yet God says lot of Adam Yod. Uh, He's not <laughs> Levad over here. That's the whole point. That's the whole point. It's like being a Siamese twin. Everywhere one goes, the other goes. You, you, you can't be separate. You need each other. And yet at the same time, you're limited in your uh, interactions because, because of that forced mm-hmm. kind of situation. Mm-hmm. And, and therefore, it's all about the empathy and working with each other to facilitate a shared life. And um, that's, that's not at all alone. Meaning, the al is saying that really for humanity to know how to relate to God, right? We always say, why did God create humanity with, with male and female so that they can engage in a relationship? And by doing that, humanity is learning how to relate to God because God and humanity or God and creation has a male-female relationship, right? right? Okay, so the al is saying that was even possible without the physical ability to have children. The physical ability to have children is just a later... A emanation of that idea in the physical sense but mm-hmm. but but truly on this level they still could have engaged in each other to learn how and therefore relate to God that's that's what we're saying you, you, right I'm saying good you know what I'm right okay 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 okay, okay. excellent okay so now and and now maybe we'll understand what the difference is between Tmut and Tzela I mean they still had the likeness of God because they could facilitate good but they didn't have an actual form that you need to take in order in the physical because they need to be separated and they need to be a, a male form and a female form, right? Mm. Okay, amazing. Okay. It's true because we said that the Kitzelen part only came when they separated the male from the female. Right, so we're obviously focusing on that on the stage right before to make the point. That's what the al is keyed in on here, right. okay? Okay, so. adam below isha kenegdo without... Uh, a male, female, opposite each other, liyot kayam biyish, in order to establish humanity. Kihine ruchani b'tmut Elohim. Rather, they were spiritual only in the tmut and the likeness of Elohim asaoto. That's that's how this uh, creature was made. Ki az todatav lo hayurak ruchaniya, because in that state, their progeny could only be in the spiritual sense. Hem orot sefer Torah. That is the lights of the of the book of the Torah. Kihu ruchani domelikona. Now, when we talk about the book of the Torah, we're not talking about this book. Because it was before there was this book. Moshe wrote this book. So why are we saying that Sefer means Torah? Why, why is the Torah Sefer before it was this? Mm. Okay? And we, talk, we never really talked about this, but we mentioned when we discussed what Gan Eden is, he talked about it. But, but the earliest form of the Torah that we talk about essentially is a book because we talk about the supernal Torah that God consulted, so to speak, to create his world. That's also seen like that we discuss as blueprints. Mm. So is right. What, what is that really? That's, that's a, if you ask me what that really means in a deep way or in a simple way, it's the same thing. It means the will of God. I Meaning God made a creation that conforms to his will and his being. It doesn't, the, the Torah doesn't exist independent of God. We say the Torah is God, right? You serve the rights of the Torah. It's, the Torah is the abstracted um, thoughts and, or desire of God. So when it says that God consulted uh, the Torah, so he, meaning he made his will embodied, and that's a Torah, and that means that that is the, essentially the form and the structure of all creation, and that to manifest God himself. So when we talk about the Sefer Torah, it's like it, it means the, the way, the medium in which to engage in a relationship with God itself, it's a Sefer. It's like the abstracted. Okay, uh, uh, enough for now. Okay, so that's, okay. So, Vizeo bidmut Elohim asauto. That's why we don't use the word tzalem. Because the focus here is just on the fact that they were like God, blessed be he, in the fact that they could bestow good or do ma'asim tovim. Ah, however, achakach, afterwards, zachar nekeva baram, the Torah, the verse continues and said that God actually... Um, he, what's the word in English? He, he differentiated and distinguished this one creature into a uh, distinct masculine component 
and a feminine component. them when he separated them, shiyu kayamin bimin, in order that they could establish a species. That's when vayevarachotam and God bless them puravu. You should um, uh, be fruitful and multiply, or do, and you should uh, you know uh, go down to all the different depths of uh, the world and uh, conquer it or subjugate it. Kimafar Sham, like uh, the Pasuk uh, explains over there. Shehu sheyu tzadikim sheyadam moshla lama alako. So the al explained that initially all the way back in the beginning of Bereshit when we talked about on the sixth day where God blessed them and he instructed them that they should fill all the, uh, subjugate all the various domains of God's creation, we were talking about that he was empowering the righteous to be able to unify all the domains and subjugate them by subjugating himself, mm -hmm. by becoming a master of himself and his Yetzirah, therefore he will be able to have dominance over reality and bring that all, so to speak, under the, you know, in the, with the awareness of God, mm -hmm. okay? And therefore, Gam Az, also then, Adam. even after he had separated them into Zachar and Akeva, they were still empowered on the level of to be Tzadikim and to be called Adam, Lashon Yachid, over there, Adam is a singular name. Why? Alachdut kishona, how they were unified, or they were able, they were prepared in a way to come together with unity. Ella, however, shalohayazelahem rakbi yomi baram. This was only, sadly, a state that they had experienced on the day they were created. Ki Adam bikar bayalim, because a man does not abide in dignity. There's a, this is a reference to a verse in Tehillim that says, Adam bikar bayalin nimshal kabehemot nidmu. That man is uh, basically compared to an animal. Meaning, uh, the, uh, man in his fallen state is not a dignified creature, but uh, left to his own devices is little more than an animal. So here we say, shechatav and nidkakel, because Adam sinned and he messed things up. The ofen, in a manner, shayidechen, that through this, halavai, that he messed up to the point where Halavai, if only after, when the verse says that Adam lived 130 years and only then he was able to produce something worthy, meaning Shays. So, Achar Teshuvato, after he was doing Tshuva, Chazase was involved in Tshuva for 130 years to fix that which he had um, perverted in himself, then he was prepared to produce. Sheit ki az vayolet bidmuto, and that's why the pasuk says that Sheit was also bidmuto. He was in the likeness of Adam, kitzalmo, also in form, because you can only be with the likeness of God, but not in form when you're back to back before God separated Adam. Once he's separated, then it takes all the way 130 years till Sheit that you can have somebody bidmuto, also bitzalmo. You got that? Why? Because oh. Sheit is. There was never a point before Shays that you had a separated, uh, you had, you had um, humanity as separate male and female, that you also had bidmut. You only had bitzalim, right? Bitzalim is when God separates them. They were only bidmut before God separated them. After God separated them, other messed up. So they were no longer bidmut. They happened to be bitzalim, but they were not in tmut. Finally, till Shait, after 130 years, now you have bitzalim and bidmut. So how did you, why, why is it that shit? Brought in because Shait is a, um, a after God separated. Here, what did we say? We said that you could, the only time that man was ever in the likeness of God was before he separated them. Right. And that's why they were bidmut, they were in the likeness of God. They were not bitzalim because they weren't separated. They didn't get their finished form yet. But they were bidmut. Right. The second God separated them, Adam sinned. So they might have been bitzalim now, but they were no longer bidmut. It takes 130 years for those things to go back together in the person of shit. It's it's the first time they were ever together. I mean, because, because he, did, he had to do teshuva shit, before. Shait comes into the world already b'tzalem. But, but, but nobody before Shait had the demut. What does demut mean? Likeness. Which means that you're doing good stuff. You're like God. You're making the world a better place. What does tzalem mean? You have a finished outer form to facilitate that. But it's just an outer form. So when man was comprised of Zachar and Akeva back to back, they had the likeness of God. They could bestow good, but they didn't have their finished form. Once God separated them, they had the finished form, but then they sinned, so there was no more likeness. 
130 years later, you have a specimen of humanity where those two things come together, and that's shit. But that suggests that the, the teshuvah of Adam is complete then. Enough to make a shit, mm -hmm. absolutely. But we know that his teshuvah hasn't been complete till Abraham. No, his teshuvah hasn't come complete yet. That's what we're all waiting for. That's David Melch. That's yeah. Mashiach. Yeah. So the this two is things a par partial. It's a partial teshuvah. Enough to make a shit. Enough to make a shit. Right, which was higher than Kain and Hava. Adam did everything he could in his own personal life now to fix himself and produce offspring. However, all the implications of everything he did to mess up the world, that was bigger than him to do. And even if he lived, you know, and that's why there's a whole story of humanity that results in us and results in a Mashiach, please God, that we should produce. Yeah, that's all, that's all putting on scuba gear and going down, down, down into the details of the story. But, but Adam Marisha, see, here's the thing. When a person sins, you mess up three worlds, three domains. You need a slicha mechila kapar. You mess up your relationship with God. You mess up yourself. And you have, it has terrible uh, repercussions on the world you live in. Yeah. Now, you have to do everything you can to fix all that. And you can't fix any of that until you fix yourself first. And all that other stuff may be too big for you to fix now. How is Adam Rishon going to restore the world from a world that was supposed to be eternal, that went to mortality? How is he going to introduce them? He needs God to do it. Mm. Only God can help him do that. And God says in order for that to work, there's a whole story that includes Galut Mitzrayim and the Gula and generations upon generations and four Malchiot that are already talked about in the second verse of Bereshit. So, you know, that's a long-term story, but in terms of what Adam did himself to be able to produce offspring to actually achieve a Mashiach, he did that in his own life. And it took him 130 years. And that's pretty good. And if he wouldn't have done that, nobody could come afterwards and fix it. That's the whole point. It had to be him. Because it was only him. Who's going to come fix what Adam did? It had to come from him. He's fixing it. This is all, that's what we mean when we say that all our souls were in him when he sinned and all of us have a chilek in the fixing of it. We're all being mitakin ourselves. That's, that's the whole Kabbalistic spin. But there's, a, there's an element of teshuva of his work that was enough to make a shit. Right, which is and what I'm arguing is all the work that he could have possibly done himself to fix himself. Mm -hmm. You know, there's different ways that Chazal characterizes. For example, there's such a wide array of, of, of sins given for the eating of the Yitzhadat that doesn't sound like anything. As one is that, you know, he was supposed to wait till Shabbat to be intimate with his wife, but he didn't. What does that have to do with eating for the trip? Where do you, right? One is that he, he was born without a foreskin and he fashioned for himself mm -hmm. a foreskin. What does that mean? So these are all... I don't want to say metaphors, chas v'sham. They're all aspects of reality. To, to, there, there's, there's something deeper going on here. And, and in terms of how it affected the world, we know God said that the day you eat it, you're going to affect all of humanity, you're going to affect the world, you're going to plunge the world into darkness, right? The whole quality of being will be different. However, Adam did everything he could to fix himself. After 130 years, he was ready to get back on the ball. And now, instead of living a life in Gan Eden, now he was capable of actually starting the work to get humanity back to getting back into Gan Eden. Are we also saying that <clears throat> after Shet, every um, birth was Salem and um, Bidimut? Well, generally speaking, yes. Because if you have a human form, you're Bitzel. And if you do good things, you're Bidimut. And if you're empowered to do, if you have the ability to do good things, you're bidmut. That's the point. Yeah. But this is the first time the two came together. Mm -hmm. I mean, Hevel, arguably, was Bitzel and Bitmut, but we're not talking about it. Mm -hmm. And that was all tragic. You know, it's funny. We mentioned before, Hevel literally means vapor. It's almost like he didn't have a physical presence. He had right. no impact. He had no, he vanished like a, right? He doesn't have a presence. He, and he is shit. Shit is him. It's just given so, a new... So, so let me just ask yeah. you this. I mean, if, I'll, if, I'll tell you, the big difference yeah. between Hevel and shit is that Hevel was born before Adam did tshuva. And still right. he was the embodiment of good. God did the separation there, right? Yeah. Hevel got lost. Adam Marishan does all the tshuva, and then he brings Hevel back himself through shit. Mm. That's a way to look at it, too. Um, I wanted to ask you uh, about the foreskin, because if it's true that Avram pulled over the foreskin... Avram? You mean Adam? Uh, Adam, rather. Yeah. Uh, and we know that um, the first um, instruction of Brit Mila is for Avram. So what is the status of Shet vis-a-vis -vis, um, Mila? 
Is he born with a Mila, without a Mila? Okay, that, so that's an interesting question. That's a separate... There's, uh, there are, I believe there's 10 people who are born without um, the need for... Meaning they were born without a foreskin. Yeah. Now I want to tell you that foreskin, the purpose of circumcision is not to remove the foreskin. The purpose of the circumcision is to enter a covenant with God. The foreskin has its own importance. Meaning even somebody who's born without a foreskin still needs to do a yeah. tafatan to be right. in a covenant with God. Why? Because a covenant is two parties, you need to initiate. So then what's the significance of being born without a foreskin? If one did have a foreskin when they were with a covenant with God, they pull it back. Mm. The point is that the foreskin means, you know, we talk about there's a, a, a foreskin of the heart. Yes. A foreskin is basically a protective layer that precludes you from being vulnerable in a relationship so that you only engage on your own terms. It's about what you want. You retreat and you hide and you cover it, right? And, and uh, even the Rambam who says he tries to um, offer rational explanations for the mitzvot, even though there aren't really any, yeah. but he gives you ways of, right? So he talks about how the idea of a Jew is, right, just uh, physiologically that a lot of the, you know, the pleasure from, from, uh, from uh, sexual activity uh, it registers in the flesh there in the, in the foreskin, whether it's the nerves or whatever. So the Ramam says by removing that, we're saying, we're trying to say, focus on that it's not about a personal pleasure, that it, right? But the point is that the foreskin represents uh, interacting uh, uh, not in a way that's vulnerable that allows for a true mm -hmm. relationship. Mm -hmm. So when the, the significance of saying the other Mauritian fashioned for himself a foreskin, that's just thematic with everything, how the world fell, how he's distanced from God, how he's, he's enveloped in some sort of coarse material that he can't interact with God, right? Mm -hmm. And he would have had, probably, he had shaped after he gave himself a Brit Mila again, right? But there, so somebody who's born without a foreskin, even though they have to engage in it, that means they're primed, that they're already primed, they were made complete, there's something good in them that's looking to engage in a true mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. So for example, Noah was without a Mila, uh, Moshe Rabbeinu was born without a Mila. I'm sorry, without a, a, an Arla. Um, uh, there's, there's ten of them, and there's, there's a beautiful, there's hints in each Pasuk. I, offhand, I can't rattle them mm -hmm. off. But that's, that's a theme in and of itself. Mm -hmm. Does that, uh, mm -hmm. that address here? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, do we, we still got a little bit more to do. How are we doing time-wise? Um, let's see. Uh, well, we have to finish. Okay. We got, yeah, we we're into our. Uh, we're into our. Uh, is that a good place to stop? Yeah, I mean we have we have another paragraph, but yeah, we could stop here. Okay. Shem, it's a pleasure seeing you. For a little bit Sorry. Thanks for coming. Sorry. God bless you. Okay. Okay. okay.